So in this video, we're going to talk about inverse trigonometric functions. So um, one thing to know about inverse functions, um, inverse functions come from one-to-one -one functions. Okay, so a function to be one-to-one -one means that it passes the horizontal line test and the vertical line test. Okay. Meaning any horizontal line you th draw through the graph only intersects at one place and any vertical line that you draw through the graph intersects only at one place. That's a one to one function. Okay. Um, and it has an inverse. Now, if we think about something like y equals the sine of x, okay, this graph starts at the origin and cycles through Go like that um, clearly we're gonna pass the vertical line test definitely okay so it is a function however if I draw a horizontal line we see that it intersects in infinitely many places okay so it just keeps going and going and going now um, to get around this, to make this to where it is actually, you know, it does have an inverse, what we're going to do is we are going to restrict the domain. We're going to restrict the domain to only x values that we care about. Okay, so we're going to restrict it between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And so now we're only going to focus on this portion of the graph. Now this portion of the graph, okay, so y equals sine x restricted um, to the interval negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, this is one to one, all right? This is a one to one function, all right? Any vertical lines I draw only pass through it in one place. Any horizontal lines that I draw only pass through that red curve in one spot, all right? So that is one to one there. Okay, so um, an equation for an inverse of y equals f uh, sine of x is obtained by interchanging x and y. All right, so we're going to swap x and y. Everywhere I see an x and y, I'm going to swap them. So sine, y equals sine of x becomes x equals the sine of of y. Okay, so x equals the sine of y. Now, y, okay, y is stuck between what values? y is stuck between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, just as our interval says up here, okay? The explicit form is called the inverse sine of x. Now, how do we do this? We write it, we define it to be, so the inverse sine of x is defined to be sine, and then we're going to do a negative 1 to the x. Okay, so this represents the inverse. This is not equal, so it's not the same as 1 over the sine of x, okay? That's not the same, right? This is the reciprocal. This is the inverse. So make sure, you know, you don't get confused there when you see this on your calculator. Um, 
you see here you in blue when you do your second and you have your sign inverse button that's not one over sign that's the sign inverse button okay all right just want to make sure we were okay with that all right so definition y equals the sine inverse of x means what it means x equals the sine of y okay where x is stuck between negative 1 and 1 and y is stuck between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2 okay So because y equals the sine inverse of x means that x equals the sine of y, um, we read this as y is the angle or real number whose sine equals x. Okay? So y is the inverse sine of x. Be careful about your notation here, like I've said earlier. Um, that negative one there doesn't mean to do the reciprocal. That's the inverse notation. And if you think about it from college algebra, if you had like, a, I don't know, um, f of x equals x cubed, the inverse is that negative one symbol there on the function, and that'd be like the cube root, the opposite, the inverse. Whenever I apply those two functions together, they cancel each other out, right? Okay. So, um, the inverse of a function receives as input an element from the range of f and returns as output an element of the domain, okay? So if you have a function, and this is my domain, x, and typically what happens is your function f takes a number in the domain and maps it over to y, the range. But the inverse function, what it does is it takes a number in the y and maps it back to the domain okay so so we're ma mapping backwards it's it's a it's a way for us to backtrack to undo whatever we did okay so inverse functions you know in real life why are they important well think about like a social security number okay there was some um, number generated when you were born uh, that you've been assigned and so that number is meaningless unless we have some way to take that number and map it right back to who you are, okay? So that's an inverse function to take that number, that social security number, and map it back to um, to you, okay? So uh, let's see here. If I look more closely... on the interval, okay, we restricted between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, all right, so what did that look like? So let me try to do a little bit better job. Right, so this point right here is negative pi over two comma negative one. And then this point here is pi over two comma one. All right, now the, this would be, this would represent y equals um, the sine of x, okay? Now the inverse function, <clears throat> 
right? If we swap x and y, if I swap x with y, what happens? I'm reflecting everything across the y equal x line, okay? I'm literally f reflecting it across. So now what happens? My new graph ends up looking something like this. Okay, I didn't do a great job. I'm trying my best though. Okay, let me try that one more time. Okay. So something like this, all right? So the curve now, this is negative one to negative pi over two, and then one to pi over two. Okay, literally your x now becomes your y, and your y now becomes your x, okay? So that's, that's what's happening there. You're swapping your x and your y values. So this new red curve is y equals the sine inverse of x, all right? And it's only defined on values from negative one to one, okay? So, y equals the sine inverse of x is only good for x between negative 1 and 1. And it outputs values that are only between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. Okay. Maybe... We can graph it in our calculator, see what we think. Okay, so let me cancel that out. So let's do arc sine of x and just see what happens, All right? So there you, you can see right there, there's your curve. Okay, and so down here at this point down here, All right? The y value is negative pi over two, uh-oh. And the x value is neg at negative 1. And then here we get to 0, 0. And then up here, it's the y value is positive pi over 2. Can't quite get up high enough, but trust me, it's positive pi over 2. And then the x value, as you can see um, up there at the top, it's, it's 1. Okay? So that's consistent with what we found here in our graph. All right. Hopefully this kind of helps a little bit in introducing the um, inverse sine function. And um, we'll go from there.